Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Sound News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be the latest edition of the Grittiest Take as we do some analysis on the overall team as we preview the game against the Minnesota Wild after the Flyers fell 3 to nothing to the Edmonton Oilers, where Miko Koskinen, albeit, did play a fantastic game, probably one of his best of the season, but you would like to against a very bad statistically and also just watching them a lot this season, at least 20 of their games. The Oilers aren't a squeaky clean defensive team. You would have liked to at least not get shut out. But it is what it is. They make a difference or a move in the lineup, I should say, tonight, putting Willman in for Ratcliffe as Ratcliffe goes back down with the Phantoms. I don't love this yo-yoing with prospects type thing we're doing where um, I definitely completely disagree with people that say, oh, I want to see these nobodies instead of these other nobodies because they're not nobody. Isaac Ratcliffe has come up and had good success in 10 games. His worst game was actually against the Oilers, uh, which is fine. If you have a bad game, that shouldn't mean you get initially sent back down. Just because you have one bad game, that doesn't speak volumes to your organization if you're going to yo-yo guys after one bad game just to have the Broussards in the lineup that, as Russ Cohen said, aren't hiring the trade value anymore by having them in the lineup. If you're going to move on from Patrick Brown, having him in isn't hiring his trade value. So, like, there's different guys you could easily allow these young guys to keep playing for because I completely disagree with people that don't think Ratcliffe, at least. Willman might be one thing. He's probably more of an AHL forward that can be a good depth guy like Mayhew has in his career at the NHL level. But Ratcliffe's a guy that looks like he could be an NHL player. He actually looks like he played more up on the skates and more aggressive and better in both zones at the NHL level because he's kind of been there, done that. And I'm not saying you just don't do the most. He just gives great effort at the AHL level, I would say. But it seems like he kind of just goes and plays and isn't as up on his skates, doesn't have as much fire in his belly, so to speak. Where at the NHL level, I saw him play, step up his play on the green. I even talked to, about that with my best friend Zach on the PlayStation 2, which we're both big Flyers fans for life. But when it comes to tonight's game, they decide to add the speed with Willman. It might not be the worst idea since we are playing the Minnesota Wild, who do fly around the ice. Uh, they have Hartman, they got Zuccarello, he flies, Fiala flies, Frederick Goudreau's having a great season, Matthew Boldy's a good skater at 6'2", and has been playing immensely great, gotta watch out for him, Kirill Kaprizov is an absolute legend already, so his team is put together well, Nico Sturm is a good role player, fourth line center, Bukestad, DeWar, they all fill their roles, and that's also something that for our team, Patrick Browns of the world, do. They fill their role. They're not nobodies. They're guys that fill their role on the penalty kill, and th that's what they are. You got Brandon Duhame, Joel Eriksenek, and Marcus Foligno is the third line. Um, like, that's a really solid third line. You have Foligno, who has 28 points. Jer Eriksenek, who has 29 points. Uh, Brandon Duhame, who continues to get better, fills his role, has 14 points, and is getting better on both sides. The second line is Boldy, Goudreau, Fiala. Then it's Zuccarello, Hartman, Kaprizov. Then it's Dior. Uh, Sturm and Bukestad because Jordan Greenway is banged up who just got a great 2.1 extension. Bill Guerin again keeps impressing with these economic contracts after Chuck Fletcher just offered Risto six something. I'm I'm for I'm I'm gonna make it this way. I'm all fine with keeping Risto. It should just stay at the tag he's at, or maybe at most, and this is even stretching it five million. Um, and that that's stretching it again. Um, Goligoski's on the first line, played well for the Wild. Spurgeon, then it's Jonas Bergin, Dmitry Kulikov, that is playing fantastic on their second defensive line. Kulikov's had a resurgence. Then John Merle and Kalen Addison right now, or their fourth line, which Jordy Ben's also been slotted in there. And Matt Dumba is, of course, banged up. That's the missing piece that is an in right now on their defense. But <clears throat> before I continue, please can you describe down below whatever button these use, which can help us go to 215 by March 15th, the middle of March. But this team, this wild team, the only thing they're missing to go from being a very good playoff contender to a cup contender, in my eye, is a guy like a Claude Giroux, a guy that comes in and is an immediate impact at center. They need another center. That's why, obviously, I'm not surprised they are one of the teams in the Claude Giroux sweepstakes, where now we know the Flyers want a young player, a prospect, um, and a pick uh, for Claude Giroux. So I don't think, honestly, in my opinion, that is too much of an AS because Giroux, we know uh, what he can do, and I think them asking for a first-round pick, a prospect, and a young player is not uh, absolutely abundantly out of the question because, for example, if they went to the Wild, a guy that is a young player 
that they've been rumored to move for someone like JT Miller that's having a good season for the Wild, but there have been rumors him and Everson don't always see out of eye, is Kevin Fiala. Well, I would that would be a decent get back. But anyway, this isn't a video we should be diving deep into the trade of, of Claude Giroux, but it is something you could explore then. That's a young player, then you could get an Adam Beckman maybe, and you got a guy that's a scorer, and you got a guy like Fiala who's a good all-arounder, plus their pick, and, and who knows, you go from there, or you go defense route, you grab Kalen Addison with a youngster, uh, or you grab um, even somebody like uh, O'Rourke, a Hunt, or a Lambos uh, with a youngster, and then you're solid there, or a Johansson who's solid from the 2018 draft. There's, there's different alleys and highways to go here, basically, when you say a young player and a prospect, because you don't know what the degree of the young guy is going to be like how high of a level they are right now, if it's going to be to the degree of a Fiala or if it's going to be a young guy that's more like a Duhame who's still developing or a Duar or somebody like that, that still has to obviously have more room to grow. But we'll have to see as time goes on when it comes to the trade aspect. When it comes to in this overall check-in for the Flyers as we're also previewing the Wild game, uh, we're going to look at our lines, which is Fairby, Jeru Atkinson for tonight, Lindblom, Lord, and Konechny, Van Riemsdyk, Brassard, Mayhew, Willman, Brown, and McEwen. Then Braun and Provy, Sanheim, Risto, Yandel, and Sealer with Carter Hart in net. Uh, this is a game, again, at this point this season, I don't predict wins anymore for the Flyers as we're here on our team check-in for the grittiest take this week where we analyze the way that the play's been, which, I mean, <laughs> do we really need to say it hasn't been Good. There's been some better effort games, but still, to come to losing games, you were able to win the game in Washington, or not in Washington, but against Washington, you know what I mean. And other than that, the Flyers still have found ways to drop it in the end rather than find ways to get to the top. But I like the way that they've had better efforts in some of these games, whether it was the first loss against Washington, the 5-4 loss against Pittsburgh, the 4-3 loss against Carolina. But then last game, <clears throat> they pushed it, they had some good pace, they had a decent effort, but again... I would have liked to be able to get a goal past one, Miko Koskinen, and two, the defense of the Edmonton Oilers. So that's kind of just my thoughts on that. Our Flyers tonight go into playing a very good Minnesota Wild team that has been great the entire season. Um, I don't have the most positive thoughts of how I think they're going to match up against this team, but maybe that's a good thing because the, the, a game that I had similar thoughts to today was that Carolina game that somehow we got to overtime and lost it. So um, maybe we can at least do that, get a point, and have some goodness kind of come out of this game. But I thank you all for watching this video of the latest, grittiest take Flyers team check-in. As we kind of analyze their play lately, talk a little bit about the Giroux trade since it does correlate with the Minnesota Wild, and then go into the lines for tonight's game. And also the key for tonight's game, I think, is just simple. I think Carter Hart's likely to see a lot of shots against the Wild. It's going to be Carter Hart stepping up to steal you a game and having the offense have enough oomph in their bellies, which they haven't had for a while, to get you over the top. And that would be the keys if they want, if the Flyers are somehow able to pull out a win in this one. But this has been the latest edition of the Grittiest Take by Sports Night News. I'm Zip Work. Have a safe day, everybody. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget. Go Flyers. Hopefully they can get back in the win column tonight. Peace out, everybody.